All right, you guys, so today I'm doing a review and flip through of The Good and the Beautiful Math Level 1. If you've been around here for a little bit, you know that we had every intention of using this math curriculum for my first grader this year. But over the summer and after going to our homeschool convention, I decided to change to Math UC. But I know that many of you are still probably looking for math curriculums, and so I thought that while I had it on hand, I might as well dive into it and show you guys a look inside if you are looking for a review and flip through on their math level five I will have that coming out next week so make sure that you hang around if you want to see that yeah I'm gonna turn around the camera and get started all right, you guys, so as far as price goes, for the whole set, which I believe includes the whiteboard because my set came with the whiteboard, uh, it is $59.98 on their website at the time of filming. If you get just the math book, it is $29.99, and if you get the math box alone, it is $28.99. Now, um, I am going to do a full flip through of this book, but I'm also going to show you just a look inside what one lesson looks like and what one unit assessment looks like. So check out the timestamps down below if you want to skip to what an actual lesson looks like. Otherwise, just, just keep on watching and you'll get everything. All right, so jumping into the course book, it starts with a table of contents where it covers all of the lessons and what those will look like. There are, and then there's the hundreds chart. There is an information section about the course. So it goes over course organization, daily lessons, supplies needed, which is obviously going to be the course book, but they also recommend having um, the math box. And I'll open this in a bit and show you guys inside. And then there's uh, pencils that are required, crayons and a whiteboard with a dry erase marker. There are also some frequently asked questions that give you additional information about it. And I believe that there are four units in total in this book. And so at the beginning of each new unit, you will get an overview that covers what lessons they are, whether or not any extra supplies are needed, some tips for the parent and or teacher, and then uh, new concepts that are being taught. Now, these lessons are estimated to take about 15 to 20 minutes a day and designed to do about four to five days a week. Overall, there are 120 lessons, so that breaks down to being about 30 weeks long. And this is a spiral approach curriculum, so as your child is covering new information, they will also cover the information that they learned if they used um, The Good and the Beautiful previously, just so they can make sure that they're not forgetting anything. Now, as far as daily work, the lessons do range from about two to five pages, but not every page has math problems to solve. Some pages will be filled with information sections on the lesson and questions to ask your child and then others will be like a game board. The last two lessons of every unit is a review of the entire unit that you're finishing. And then um, at the end of the course, there is an overall course review, which is also two lessons long. So some of the big concepts that your child is gonna cover in this book is gonna be calendar work, counting forwards and backwards, counting by fives and tens, dividing in half. They're gonna uh, get some money skills. They're gonna go over addition and subtraction. So word problems. They're going to learn uh, how to tell time. They're gonna go over some fractions. They're also going to be counting by hundreds. They're gonna be working with bar graphs. They're gonna do some rounding and a various amount of other math related concepts. But I figured that I would tell you guys the, the big topics that they're gonna be covering. There is no physical answer key for this book either, but you can download one from their website. It is under the facts and extras or the frequently asked questions and extras section under um, this particular curriculum's webpage.
Now, one thing that I did forget to mention with the prices is that the Good and the Beautiful is really wonderful in the fact that they do offer all of their math and language arts curriculum for I believe kindergarten to sixth grade for free. So if you go to this um, their website, then you can put in your email and get that PDF download and all you have to do is print it out. So that's one huge blessing to homeschool families where you can get this absolutely free. So whether you are just looking to try it out to see if it works before investing or you're short on funds or just looking to save some money on funds, then this is a great resource to, to get curriculum at a discounted rate. All right, so I wanted to show you guys inside of one of the lessons and then also one of the reviews just so you could really get an in-depth feel for what you'll be expected to do every day with your child. Now, um, this is lesson four, so it's 34, so let's go over it. So on this lesson, you will be writing numbers to 40, part two. So you're gonna have your child practice items that are not mastered they're going to spell one, two, and three aloud, and then they will say odd numbers from one to ten, and then it also even tells you what those numbers should be. You're going to have them point to the numbers as you count from 30 to 40, and then they're going to come to these boxes and write in the missing numbers uh, as they count up by ones. Now, um, the bit Good and the Beautiful is very big on math games in their curriculum. So if you purchase the math book, then you, or the math box, I should say, you're going to take the rowboat from the math box and give it to your child and read to the child. One warm summer morning, Andy jumped into his rowboat and rowed all the way from his house to his friend's house. Even though he can walk across the bridge to Sam's house, sometimes he prefers to row there. Place your boat on number one and move it through the river to number 30 as you count the numbers. So they'll take their little rowboat and then they'll move along this river. And then it says, uh, that was pretty quick. Now the rowing gets harder and slower. On the whiteboard, write 31 and then 32 and then move your boat along until you continue all the way up to number 40. Then on the following page, you will have your child take the shapes from the math box and recreate this. And then you will have them write the time shown for the clocks. You will have them add these up. And then you will write the amount of cents shown by each coin or group of coins. And, don't for and then they give you the reminder to not forget the cent sign. And that's it for lesson 34. You would then move on to lesson 35. Okay, now as far as one of the unit assessments, you are going to go over the parent-teacher area, and then your student will have an oral assessment. So you'll have them count from 290 to 320. On the whiteboard, you will have them write four, five, and six. You'll have your child identify the name of each of its coin and its value. Your child will write 10 tally marks on the whiteboard. You will have them tell you if 
She does the following things in the morning, afternoon, or evening, and then it will give you a list of things to cover. You'll have your child um, tell you how many things are in a dozen. You'll have them go over the order of the season, starting with winter. You'll have your child count by twos from 50 to 70. You'll have your child set the math box clock to the following times. And then um, you will tell your child a hexagon has six sides and then have them point to each shape that is considered a hexagon. And then if they don't get these things right, then they'll complete the additional practice area. And then the next page, your child will cover fact families. And then again, if they get that incorrect, then they will get their additional practice. They will have calendar work right here. On this page, they will count by twos and then write the numbers that are missing. And then they will do graphs on this one. Here they will go over one half and one fourth and then they will write which ones are which. Here they will count the quarters by 25s and circle each dollar. And then it goes on to the third unit. All right, now last but not least, the math box. So many people, to include myself, always ask, do I have to purchase this math box? Now, in short, no, we did not purchase it last year for their level K, and I feel like we got through just fine without it. However, I think it really depends on what you'd like. You know, if you'd like convenience, then and you don't want to hunt the house for various items or go and purchase you know similar things on your own then i would say to go ahead and just buy it because this does have a lot to it so on the outside it has a clock for all of their clock work that they're going to do in their course and then um it has little different shapes that are different colors that are also um i believe they're all magnetic and because your child is going to make different shapes with all of these. So this is where it probably would be good to just invest in the math box. Uh, they also have some little clocks that have different times on them. And then there are these little boats that you're gonna use that have numbers. There is some money. And then there is a dice game. And at one point in one of the lessons where it says, you know, roll the dice that has the numbers and then roll the dice that has right and left so your child can learn directions. Now, you can also always get creative. You don't have to have this if money is tight or if you go their free PDF route. You know, you can always make up different things. You don't have to use a dice to teach these things or even the shapes or, you know, whatever other products they have. But if you are looking for convenience and you are um, just looking to have kind of a grab and go situation, then it would be good to have the box and, you know, just have your child squared away. Otherwise, these might be some of the items that you're going to want to have to plan to have on hand for some of their lessons. All right, you guys, so I hope that you enjoyed seeing inside the Good and the Beautiful Math Level 1. If you have any questions about it, then let me know down below. I will do my best to answer them. Um, I have not currently used this, though. Like I mentioned, we did decide to change, so we have not gone through this. One of the reasons for those, that change was because, not because I didn't like their Level K math. I actually loved their Level K math. The lessons were short and to the point and they kept my daughter engaged. However, I also used their level four last year with my son and I did not like that and I knew eventually she was gonna progress to that point. So um, that was the reason for our changes. Um, so if you're looking for, you know, the good and the beautiful and the bad, <laughs> then you can check out some of my past videos where I talk about why I did not particularly like this math um, or his math curriculum last year. But I, I think that this is just like the level K. If we had used it, my daughter probably would have loved it. But I wanted to make sure that she was going to be using something that we would love long term instead of just 
one or maybe two years. So that is it for this review. If you like this video and found it helpful, don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that red subscribe button, and I will see you again later. Bye.